Stone Water Conservation District bringing you today's episode of Outside Every Day. Today we are going to be texturing soil and making soil ribbons and soil balls. So um, I'm doing this inside at my kitchen table because it's a little windy outside, but you could do it outside if you wanted. So we're going to go over the supplies that you'll need for this. Um, if you're doing it inside, I put um, some paper bags on the table just so it make it easier to clean. I have a determining soil texture by the fill method, um, which I'll put a link to the website for this, as well as a photo in the post. A measuring tape, which will help me measure the length of the ribbons, if I get any ribbons for the soil. And Audrey here has the spray bottle, which will help us moisten the soil to make the balls and the ribbons for. And then I wanted to see the soil texture for three different soils that we have in our yard. So I went out and collected those this morning. So I have some from the garden, some from our bark mulched flower bed, and some from our chicken run. So the chickens are running around all the time, scraping this up. Um, and the thing, the first thing I wanna look at is the color difference between all of these. So it might not be readily apparent, but for the one that's the bark mulch flower bed, it's, to me, the darkest looking, that's because for the last three seasons, it's had bark on it. And so that bark is getting incorporated into the soil by us just walking on it, by decomposition and by insects breaking it down. The garden soil, I noticed it um, sticks together in some aggregates, which are clumps of soil um, showing that your soil has good soil structure. I also saw a worm in it when I pulled it up. And then the chicken run soil looks to me the lightest, so possibly indicating um, the least amount of organic material. It's also really um, pretty crumbly when you compare it to the other two. So those are just some first um, observations you can make. I also did a quick smell run of all of these. And the ones that, uh, the one that came from the bark mulch flower bed smells uh, kind of like a forest floor. And I think that's probably because I've had bark on it. So the first thing you do when you start this is um, grab about a tablespoon worth of soil and you're gonna put it in your hand and you're gonna add, Audrey, can I have the water, please? You're gonna add a couple sprays of water. Here, Audrey. And you're gonna start to knead it into the soil. And you're wanting to make it um, where it's soft and movable, but not where it's just gonna be running out of your hand and completely sticky. So the way to test this is if you make it into a ball, does it stay in the ball if you squeeze it? And so mine is staying in a ball. So I think that that is probably telling me that it's soft enough. Again, I got a sample from the garden soil. Audrey has a sample from the chicken run soil. And then you're gonna place the ball between your thumb and forefinger, and you're gently gonna push the soil with your thumb and it's gonna slowly become a ribbon. And mine is not forming a ribbon right off the bat. It just was crumbling. So that's telling me that it's a loamy sand. So that's telling me that my soil has a lot of organic material in it, but also a lot of sand. So that sand isn't going to stick together. So that's the first test. So my garden soil is a loamy sand. I'm going to clean off our hands to do the next one. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my bark mulched flower bed. So again, getting a good, about a tablespoon size. And then while you're doing this, you'll also just want to gauge how moist your soil already is. We've been getting some rain, so I don't need a whole lot of moisture added to my soil. So again, kneading it until it's all broken down in one just kind of mass of soil. Then I'm gonna squeeze it and check that it stays in the ball. It does. So now I'll start again with the soil ribbon, pushing it down with my thumb, letting it push out. I'm gonna start again because it's all smashed again. 
but this one is definitely forming a ribbon a little more. And so that's my ribbon that I've made. And then I'm gonna measure it. It's about a two inch ribbon. So it's telling me that I have a sandy clay loam because I feel some grit in there and it made a two inch ribbon. So just these two, this one was a sandy loam or loamy sand and a sandy clay loam. And now the last one we're gonna do is from the chicken run. So this soil, it hasn't really had anything added to it. It's just been where the chickens hang out for the last three years. Um, so we'll see, you can already see it's not sticking together, even though it's got the same amount of moisture as all the rest of the soil has. It's hard for me to even get it to stick together. Okay, I've made it into a ball and it won't even smush out. So this is definitely a loamy sand as well, but probably a more sandy loam than the garden soil was. So that was just a quick um, test of three different soils from our yard, all within probably uh, 50 feet of each other, but they all have had different management types. So one of them has been a garden, one of them has been getting mulch for the last three seasons. I do have dirt on my hands. And then, and then the last one has just been where the chickens have been hanging out for the last three years. So a uh, pretty quick test. Uh, the more loamy your soil is, the richer it's going to be for plants to grow in it. The more sandy, um, the less easy plants are going to be able to grow there and the less nutrients are going to be available to them. So um, try this out. Maybe do it with your yard, uh, maybe the soil in a park, and um, have fun texturing your soil. And maybe make a note of it in your um, nature journal of where your soils came from and what kind of management you think was happening. Thank you. Take care.